So we are now going to go ahead and discuss how to solve a free fall problem. So I wrote ahead in this nice little box on the side steps for solving free fall problems. So always what I do, read the problem to yourself, underline what you want to find. Um, go ahead and do that yourself, pause the video, and then come check back in. Okay, so it sounds like we want to find the maximum height above the ground. Cool. So next thing you do, draw a picture. So again, draw a picture on your own paper and then check back in and do that for each of these steps. So I'm going to draw a little picture. So I have a nice student named Elaine. She's smiling, so happy to be doing physics. Um, let's see, she releases the ball, what, 1.5 meters above the ground. She's throwing it up at 20 meters per second. It goes up in the air and then it'll eventually go back down. Cool. So, okay, so I drew a picture. Now what I'm going to do is draw a coordinate system. So I'm going to say things in the up and down direction or the y direction. And upwards is going to be positive. This is the y direction. And then right and left is going to be the x direction. Cool. So now, and it looks like in this problem, it is just an up and down problem. So we're just going to be looking at the y direction. And again, we'll say the upwards direction is positive. Cool. So now I need to choose two points to look at. And for these two points I look at, they need to be points where I know some information or like want to find some information. So let's go ahead and look at it. I'm going to say, I know information right here. 20 meters per second, that's where I'm starting. I want to find the max height. So I'm going to find this whole entire thing. So this is going to be my ending point right here. Great. So I have two points that I know information. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill out my given. So I'm going to set up my VI, VF, A, delta X, delta T. So just like what we've previously done, we're going to use these constant acceleration equations because acceleration due to gravity is always 10 meters per second squared. Perfect. Now go ahead and guess what your givens are and then check back in on the video. Okay. So let's look at it. So it looks like we're starting right here, 20 meters per second. Okay, let's see what else I know. I only fill out the things I definitely know and then come back to the others. I want to find max height, so that's going to be a displacement. My acceleration, that is going to be, okay, so it's always 10 meters per second squared, but acceleration is pointing downwards. So I have to say negative 10 meters per second squared to be careful with my sign. So I need to know one more thing to solve this. Huh, cool. The one fun thing is, my final velocity is going to be 0 meters per second. So I know when I reach my highest point, my velocity is 0 meters per second whenever something reaches the highest point when it's in free fall. So that's the point right before it turns around and goes back down. Great. So I have enough things. Cool. So now I just need to pick a constant acceleration equation. Um, and I encourage you always have an equation sheet setting out what goes on. But I want to get ahead and pick one, and I'm going to use the vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta x. Cool. So vf squared 0 squared, what? vi 20 squared plus 2, negative 10 times what? My displacement I want to find. Cool. So now I will go ahead and plug this all in. Um, so I have what? 0 equals 400 plus negative 20 displacement. And I can solve, keep in mind the negative 20 and displacement, those are connected by multiplication, so they can only be undone by division. So I'm going to move this term to 400 to the other side, so negative 400 equals negative 20 delta x, and then our displacement will be 20 meters. Perfect. Great. So we're going to go ahead and do one more problem related to this in just a second. So I'm going to try to change this. So now we're going to go ahead and do a part B for this problem. So for this, um, I'm going to go ahead and draw a picture again. Um, I just drew, I'm going to draw a fresh picture just because I can get a little messy. So we still have our friend Elaine. So I guess we're doing physics. This is what, 20 meters per second. This is what, 1.5 meters. Um, ball goes up in the air and then it goes down. Cool. So we want the ball's impact velocity. So I should have remembered that in that at the beginning. I'm so sorry. So impact velocity, that's our velocity right here. 
Cool. I had my picture drawn and kind of used what I had from last following on my block here. Is zero meters per second. And I know that distance is 20 meters. Perfect. Now I'm going to draw a coordinate system. I'm going to use the same coordinate system as last time. So we'll say y direction, upwards direction is positive. This is the x direction. Towards the right is positive. And again, this problem is just taking place in the y direction, so I'm only going to worry about the y direction. Now I want to choose two, two points to look at. There are so many different ways to do this problem. I'm going to go ahead and choose, okay, two points I know information or I want to find information. I'm going to choose this point right here and this point right here. And again, you do not have to choose those points. So I'm going to call these the yellow points. So yellow points. So I'm going to set up my VI, VF, A, delta X, delta T. And again, I would encourage you to try filling it out yourself, and then you can check back into the video. So the initial velocity with the yellow point is 20 meters per second. Impact velocity. So that is what we want to find. So we can never say that the impact velocity as it hits the ground is zero meters per second. Even though the ball will eventually come to rest, we only have to look at the ball when it's in the air due to the influence of gravity alone. So again, it will have an impact velocity. Um, it's not going to be zero meters per second, even though it'll be zero, like a split instant after it hits the ground. Acceleration, we know it's pointing down, so it's going to be negative 10 meters per second squared. Cool. We need one more thing. We don't know the time in the air. Displacement. Oh, let's try displacement. So I know displacement is going to be my final position minus my initial position. So we're ending at the ground. So that's zero. Take away my initial position. I'm 1.5 meters above the ground to start. So my displacement is negative 1.5 meters. Cool. Uh, now I can go ahead and just pick a good old equation. Bf squared, bi squared plus 2a delta x, and I can solve away. I went ahead when I got in there. Well, actually, let's just do it. So we have 20 squared plus 2, negative 10, times negative 1.5. Cool, those two negative signs will make it positive. So I get 430. Great. Now if I want to find bf, but it's squared, I have to take the square root. So taking the square root of 430, whenever we take the square root, it's going to be plus or minus. So VF is going to be plus or minus square root of 430. Now let's look at our signs to see what makes sense. It's going downwards, so I'm going to choose the negative sign, or negative 20.76 meters per second. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a little more space, erase a little bit of this, and let's just look at two other points just for fun. Um, we'll just do a little bit of erasing. It's been fun to watch me erase. So, um... And again, we found the F to be our answer for the yellow points was negative 20.76 meters per second. And my displacement was negative um, 1.5. Cool. So let's look at two other points. And again, you could do a thousand different points with points you know information. I'm going to choose, let's say I were to do the problem differently. I'm going to choose this top point right here. And I'm going to choose this point right here. So I'm going to call that the blue points and see if I can get the same answer for the impact velocity just using two different points. So I have VI, VF, A, delta X, delta T. So initial velocity, we are zero meters per second. Final velocity, that's what we want to find. Acceleration is negative 10 meters per second squared. That doesn't change. Gravity's still acting on it. Displacement. Okay, now let's look at it. So from here to here to see what our displacement is. So xf minus xa. So final position, I'm just going to erase time to give myself more space. It ends on the ground, so that's going to be zero. My initial position is, how far am I above the ground? It looks like I am 20 plus 1.5, so that's going to be 21.5 meters. Cool. So now let me go ahead and put in my given. So we have vf squared equals what? vi squared plus 2a delta x. Cool. Um, now let's go ahead and follow. So we have 0 squared plus 2 times negative 10 times negative 21.5. Cool. Oh, funny. This ends up to be 
um, 432. And then I take the square root and I get plus or minus um, 20.76. Wow, that is fun. So, whoopsies, excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, so I got the same answer, but just two different ways. So nifty. Um, cool. Well, thank you for watching this good old free solve problem.